How's it going, everybody? Estas here. So the stock market had a pretty extremely, insanely, ridiculously good day today. The S&P 500, I don't know why I said that. The S&P 500 and the Dow went up 0.8%. The NASDAQ 100 up 0.6%. And the Russell went up 0.3%. So today, we're going to break down some charts, my thoughts on the markets, stocks I'm looking at right now, and overall, what my game plan is in the markets. So sit back, relax, take a sip of your coffee, go down below, snag your 50 bucks from M1 Finance, and your Patreon membership. All you have to do is go to stasurfest.com slash Patreon if you want all my real-time moves and a bunch of exclusive content. And all of those, again, are linked down below. And let's get right into the video. So look, the market started off pretty red this morning and that didn't last too long i mean look spy like i said and the dow went up 0.8 percent and if you all look here i said this just five seconds ago we started off red spy went from 438.50 at open down to about 436.10 so it did drop about half a percent initially and then all of a sudden boom it ended up ripping all the way up past the pre-market highs and it ended up filling the gap all the way to 441, which happens to be the top of the channel that we're noticing here on the 20-day chart. That SPY has been trading within ever since the end of July. You guys can see, and I've been saying this on the channel for days at this point, We've been getting rejected at 441, 442, including today, and we're down after market hours today as well to 440.5, and we've been holding support at about 437, including this morning, which was the all-time high in the middle of July. So as of now, that is what's happening. And I mean, it's not much different from what we've been saying here on the YouTube channel, really, guys. And we need to see a takeout or a break above, rather, um, $442 in order for this breakout to continue. So I'm going to put my upper end target um, or my upper end alert here at 442. And I'm going to set another one at 4, 4, uh, 437, rather, to see if we end up breaking under that. So Two separate alerts here set on SPY, and again, nothing much has changed. We've just been trading in this channel religiously over the past 10 calendar days. And when it comes down to QQQ, which tracks the NASDAQ 100, this ended up breaking above 365, which was the all-time high in the middle of July, which is great. We're trading above the moving averages on the hourly chart, which is also great. And now we're fiddling with the high from, yeah, I think this was yesterday pre-market at 366, 50, 80, right around there. So if we break above that point tomorrow or some point this week, we're, uh, we're going to test 367.75, which was a double top high from last week. And if we break that point, then we're going to be probably shooting up for all-time highs that is uh, right around those all-time highs, right around um, $369 per share on QQQ. So the markets are pushing along despite the fact that we're seeing the Delta variant go crazy, which I talked about in my video uh, I was about to say yesterday. Earlier today, go check that out. I'll link it down below. We talk more about that and the implications that the rising cases will have on the stock market, especially if we see another shutdown, which I don't know. I don't think it's going to happen, but hey, anything is possible. So make sure you go check that video out. Again, I'll link it down below. And it looks like the markets saw a bit of a drop and then we ripped throughout the day today. So look, unless we get a huge spike in these cases, which we have been, but a further massive spike and the, the death toll rises and the hospitalizations go crazy, you know, if we get that, then we're probably going to see a drop in the markets, especially if we're seeing any inkling of a uh, of a shutdown on the horizon. I mean, now I believe in Australia they're locked down. I believe in uh, 
Is it England as well? I'm not too sure, guys. Quite honestly, I don't watch the news ever. I mean, I stopped watching TV a long time ago. Um, so I'm not as in tune as most of you guys, and I don't really watch or um, look at articles too much online either. I do sometimes to keep up with things, but I'm not entrenched in this stuff. But from what I'm hearing, there's lockdowns in other places, and that's a real risk right now. It's a real risk, and you guys have to understand that when you are working around your portfolios, your trading, keep that always in the back of your mind. And yeah, if you guys... Leave, uh, you know, have any comments, leave a comment down below. Make sure to smash the like button if you all are enjoying the video thus far. And let's talk about the good stuff now. Starting off with Robinhood. Holy smokes, guys. Robinhood went up 25% today. Who would have thought this would have happened, guys? 25% at the close, and it's up another $4 after market hours, meaning... It is up another, what is that, 10%? Or a little bit less than 10%. Probably up about another 8%. Yeah, 8% after hours, which is nuts. And this is crazy because I saw something on Instagram that the CMO was selling out of some shares. Uh, maybe the CEO, the CFO as well. A lot of the higher-ups were dumping shares and go figure, I mean, what did I tell you guys? When stocks or companies go IPO, right, the initial public offering, what happens? A lot of these early on investors go and they sell their stocks to the public markets like me, although I didn't buy any stock, but us, retail investors, um, you know, we end up buying the shares that they were holding from very low prices. And I saw this Instagram picture as well that Nas and Snoop Dogg, they were in a Series A very early um, round and they got in at 20 cents per share. That is unbelievable. Could you imagine 20 cents per share? I guarantee you they're selling like crazy. I would have. I would have been out. I would have been out the second this thing IPO'd. And this is good because, you know, people that bought this stock initially on the day it IPO'd, they're probably cashing out as well. So it's it's not it's not only good for Nas, Snoop Dogg, a lot of these, you know, early on investors that are cashing out, but it's also good for the people that bought on IPO day, hoping for a massive run up. And they're now selling out. You guys get what I mean? Because a lot of the time when people buy on IPO, they're banking on a huge move like what we're seeing today, 25% up, in order to dump the shares. So I guarantee you a bunch of these early on, invest not early on investors, people that bought on IPO day and the early on investors, they're dumping shares into this run up. So that makes me a bit worried. You know, is this going to stay propped up in the $50, $60 level? Will it get there or will it see a huge correction? Maybe tomorrow, some point this week. I don't know. And I'd love to know in your, um, your opinions in the comment section, are you in Robin Hood? I'm personally not. And the funny thing is I did an Instagram poll and you guys should definitely follow me there at Stasurfes, S-T-A-S-S-E-R-F-E-S, at Stasurfes on Instagram. Make sure you go follow me on there. I did a poll and I said, let me pull it up right now. Let me see exactly what I said. I said, <laughs> this is hilarious. I said, are you in Robinhood stock? 93% of you guys said no. And 7% said yes. And to give you all um, a little bit of insight on how many people voted, 65 people as of now, and I posted this about 30 minutes ago, or maybe a little bit before that, I forget. 65 said no, they're not in Robin Hood. 5 said yes. That is crazy. And that's a small sample size, but I guarantee you that is, uh, that's true for a larger size as well. And um, look, the retail investor is not behind Robin Hood. Sure, they could be trading it, but most people are not holding this as a long-term investment because a lot of people got screwed back in January, February with the GameStop, AMC situation. And honestly, I don't see anything ridiculously special about Robin Hood, the business, for me to put money into it as a long-term investment. To me, sure, they... they uh, 
revolutionized the zero dollar commission, but every brokerage does that now. It's nothing crazy. They don't even have a customer service line. You know, I, I honestly, I'd rather just buy. Does Fidelity have a stock? I'd rather buy them because I I use them. I have been for seven, eight years at this point, and I love them. I much prefer them. I don't see the whole craziness about Robin Hood here. Robin Hood. I mean, the only thing is, it could be a meme stock. Maybe Wall Street bets gets behind it to pump it up, make some money. But other than that, it, it's 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 dead to me. Like Kevin O'Leary says, "You're dead to me." Well, Robin Hood, you're dead to me. And the next stock I'm looking at right now is Amazon, ticker symbol AMZN. And as you all know, they reported earnings. They, I believe, beat EPS, but they missed revenue. Yep, they missed revenue. And the stock is now, you know, recovering. We saw a couple of days of the dust settling, consolidation above 3,300, 3,330 roughly. You guys can see that on the five-day, five-minute we held there um, on the day they reported earnings. Pre-market the next day, the market uh, open for that entire day, and we saw the past two days, <coughs> excuse me guys, past two days, the 2nd and 3rd of August, we've held that point, and today we went up 1%, closing above 33.60, so this is a sign, in my opinion, that we're trying to, not fully there yet obviously, but we're trying to fill the gap back up to where we were um, before the earnings at about $3,600 per share. And this is a pretty big gap, you know, 6%. So even if you have a small account and you can only afford, let's say, one share of Amazon, heck, even half a share of Amazon, 6% is still a decent margin of profit that you guys can make. Let's say, for example, you bought two shares at $3,350, sold them at $3,600, you're making about $500 profit. Not too shabby if you ask me. Um, and I definitely can see that happening You know, over the next couple of weeks. Could it not happen? Of course. We don't know what's going to happen. But I'm just giving you all my opinion here. And pulling back the four-hour, you can see... The uptrend's continuing. We're breaking above the EMA. Now there's a big gap to move up or fill up to the moving averages at about 35, 3600 here on the four hour chart. So I'm watching Amazon. Activision Blizzard is another one that I'm watching heavily right now, which quite honestly, I feel like this whole lawsuit, um, it's a bit overblown. This is what we notice when companies go through uh, these types of events, you know, Facebook with the, uh, what was it called a, a couple of years ago? Ah, oh, crap, guys. When the stock got uh, smashed, this was about two, three years ago. Cambridge Analytica, right? That whole thing, stock got crashed or got smashed and then it recovered, right? We noticed the same thing happened with, um, you know, J&J &J with the whole, you know, situation with their baby powder. The stock dropped, recovered. I think the same thing is going to happen with Activision. And now that they just reported earnings, EPS came in at $1.12. And I'm not sure what the estimates are. I was looking here on uh, Thinkorswim, couldn't find them. And revenue came in at $2.3 billion. And I believe they fired, I don't know if they fired their CEO um, or was it the CEO? Let me double check here, guys. Activision, okay, this is a very good sign. Activision replaces head J. Allen Brock as it faces gender bias lawsuit. That is a good sign that the company is kind of, I don't want to say bowing down and uh, just, you know, throwing in the towel and just saying, come on, replace this guy just for the media to, to, to let us go and uh, for the image to look good. I'm sure it's a little bit of that, but they're looking to make a change there. That's definitely a reason why the stock is moving a bit. And on top of that, again, the earnings are pretty solid and the stock is up after hours, a very good amount. I'm telling you guys, from $78, $79 to $85, it is up 6%. So I want to see on the four-hour chart if we continue in this downwards channel, which with today's um, you know bounce after hours, we held the bottom of the channel. Now do we continue up towards the high 80s, low 90s? 
I think that's definitely possible here in the short term. So I'm going to be watching that. Skills is another one that I'm looking at here. Very beaten down, guys. I mean, this was a $46 stock back in February. Now it's $13. So it's down about 75%. That is no joke. That is ugly. I mean, could you imagine if you shorted this stock in February and you just covered your short today or you played put options? You'd be well off. You'd be very well off if you did that. I'm not sure if many people did that, if any people did that. I mean, I'm sure someone did it, but if you guys watching did it, kudos to you. You nailed it. Let me know in the comments if you did. Um, but I feel like this sell-off is overblown a bit you know it's getting close to that ten dollar level we're approaching the support that we held we have held ever since april you know we've bounced off 13 12 50 many times in the past so i want to see if we end up holding this point maybe seeing a relief rally back to 15 16 if so that could be a tradable um opportunity and on top of that eps came in eh, not too great EPS came in at negative 21 cents versus negative 10 cents estimated, so they missed that. Revenue came in at 89.49 million versus 88.2 million. They beat revenue and guidance. Let's pull up the live news and see what guidance is looking like. Um, full year 2021 sales guidance. They raised it from 375 million to 375 to 376. Oh, woo -hoo. I mean, what, 1 million extra? Not too crazy. But overall, full year 21 guidance of about 375 million. And the stock is down a little bit after hours. And one thing worth mentioning is this does kind of look like a descending triangle, meaning, look, we might take out 1250. We might fail here and we could start going down to 11, $10 per share, which would not be the best. I mean, that'd be pretty ugly. Um, but look it up. Descending triangle. That is what this uh, does look like as of now. And we had Occidental Petroleum report. OXY, this one up 2.5% at the close, up even more after market hours. They did EPS adjusted of negative 32 cents, and I couldn't find their revenue number. I'm not too sure what the heck. Um, oh, 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 here it is. Oh, wait a second. Did they do 32 cents? Oh, it wasn't negative 32. It was 32. So they pulled the profit. 32 cents adjusted EPS versus negative 12 cents estimated revenue beat by a good margin there 6.01 billion versus 5.61 billion estimated so double beat for Occidental Petroleum it is up after hours on top of the two and a half percent green day it had today so this looks pretty good in my opinion we're trying to break out well we are breaking out of the 50 SMA on the four hour chart. Now I'm thinking it could go 2750, which was a, a resistance point all throughout the end of July. So watch out for that gap to fill. And then from there, maybe we start moving up towards the 180 SMA at about $29, which could be obviously even more upside from where we are now. We're talking about six, 7% upside from where we are now after hours to about $29 per share. So shout out to Occidental Petroleum, and if it breaks out of 29, which I'll set my alert right now, this could end up ripping back into the low, maybe back to the mid 30s. I'm seeing it. I'm I'm very uh much seeing that possibly, or what the heck am I saying, guys? <laughs> you know what I mean. I can see that as a possibility right now. And IBM is what I'm looking at. This one up 2% today. It closed right under the 180 SMA on the four hour and right around 144, 145, which to be honest, that's been a sticking point for months. Well, really a couple of weeks. And we held it as support a couple of months ago. And you guys know when a support fails to hold, it becomes resistance. So I feel like, and I'm going to put my alert right now at 145. I feel like if IBM can break out of 145, boom, we're going to fill the gap to 152, no problem, which as you all can see, I'm not sure if that's the all-time high. It might. Let me double check. 
Um, no, it's not. All-time high is 158. But on the four-hour chart, it is the high on this time frame at 152. And as you guys can see, that would be about a 4% gap to fill up to about 153. So watch out for IBM. And the last stock that I'm looking at is CSCO. Cisco, we called this out a couple of videos ago. And Cisco is moving up like crazy right now. It went up 1.4% today, broke out. The ascending triangle is playing out just like we called out. And it looks like it's filling the gap up to about 58 per share. Not there quite yet, but that's the target here, which was that high from a couple years ago, back in 2019, over two years ago. Um, you can see we hit 58.26. So Cisco's looking bullish. I'm thinking we go 58 here. I'm thinking there's a chance, keyword, there's a chance, it goes up above 58, maybe to all-time high, 60, 65. Who knows? I think it has breakout potential here. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be watching it <clears throat> exactly for that reason. So that's it, guys. And now that I'm looking at my watch list, holy crap, really quick uh, before I end the video, Pinterest, wow, Pinterest, guys, up 5% today. It closed under 60. So... We got to see if 60 breaks from there. Maybe a gap fill to 67. Watch out for that. And on that note, now we could end the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe, go down below, leave me a comment, and check out my Patreon if you guys are interested in all my real-time buys, sells, call-outs. If you want a morning update video every single day, if you sign up to the top tier, all of that plus much more, more access to me is on Patreon, link down below, or you guys can go to stasurfest.com slash Patreon, and make sure to also check out the free money down below. You get 50 bucks from M1 Finance by using my link, depositing $100, literally that simple, and you guys can get two stocks from Webull up to $1,600, all of those are linked down below, and don't forget to check out my video from earlier, we talk more about the Delta my thoughts on how this will affect the stock market and what I'm doing to prepare for that. All of that is linked down below. I'll catch you guys in that video. I'll pop it up here as well. See you there. Keep crushing the market. Stay safe out there, guys. Peace out.